What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, how you doing? We good, good. Been a busy week, and uh, I don't know if I'll do it tonight or tomorrow, but Dune is now up on HBO Max, so yes. excited to check that out. You going to the theaters to see it? No, I think I'm going to watch it on HBO Max. Okay. Me as well. Um, I don't know. When I came back to work on Monday, I was talking to some of my co-workers about the Batman and some of them saw it. They're excited. There was one individual, though. You'd be surprised, Brian. I asked him, how did he like it? He said it was horrible. And I'm going to invite him on the show, possibly closer to the, probably the release of the Batman so he can explain himself as to why he thought or why he thinks the Batman is going to be not great. And that was Mr. Alex Bernstein. I was amazed. He didn't really have a great answer for me to in order for me to continue having a conversation about it. I was like... You know what? We 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 can't we can't really talk about this because it's just gonna be too much tension is gonna build. <laughs> well, I have seen the I have seen the the there's been a camp of people criticizing that something we talked about that we actually are interested in, which is Pattinson is too angry. He's too out of control. Yeah. To the point where one of the writers actually had to kind of give a response as to mm -hmm. why there, you know, there was a purpose to, to that. And we, we talked about this, I guess I took it as a strength of the trailer that this was a different take on yeah. where Bruce was, but it appears that there's at least a camp of people who, who are on the other side saying there's not enough, not enough virtue, not enough heroism in how he's really being shown. Yeah. Um, I, I guess we'll have to see the film in order to determine how much of a hero he really is. I mean, he's beating up bad guys. What else do you want, right? Um, and and me in my life personally, I've met individuals who have lost parents at a very young age. And not to say that everyone is like this, but there is that that little edge that they have to to, to them, you know, and. I think it almost seems natural to have this sort of, especially, you know, it just, just imagine going through that, what Bruce went through, right? Seeing it happen in front of him, what sort of, you know, characteristics do you expect, right? So I know in the comics and in, in the animated series and, and, and perhaps other things, he's more composed. But we're looking at it from a perspective that he's green, right? He's very young in his career and he's sort of managing that. And perhaps throughout the trilogy, we'll see a more subdued and more disciplined Batman. And he'll discover that part of himself and what he needs to be. So that, that's my, been my working assumption has been that this is coming at it from the standpoint of if you were in this situation, how could you, how could you know everything you needed to know right out of the gate, yeah. emotionally, you know, physically. And like, if you made up your mind to go out on the streets and be this, you know, vigilante, but also sort of figure for justice and you're in your first couple of fights and you're faced with your first couple of life and death situations, would, would you know where the line was? Could you just that clearly delineate, Hey, I'm not going to cross this. I'm going to be. And I yeah. think the movie's asking the question as if the answer is sort of no, like realistically, yeah. no, realistically to get to that point, you need experience yeah. and experience comes through failure. In yeah. some ways. And so yeah. that I, I'm assuming that's part of what we're seeing is yeah. he's, he hasn't figured out that yet. And I, 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 I'm interested in that. So it exactly. Matter. So I don't know if that's what Alex was part of what turned him off about this, but. 
I think so, but I think I was just too jaded by his sort of <laughs> negativity towards the trailer that I I didn't stick around to try to listen to it. But um, perhaps, perhaps, but one day we'll get him on the show um, and and hear what he has to say about that. But let's get into it. Um, we have a number of items to discuss today. Um, with regards to the reactions that the Eternals has been getting, some rumors of, of new cast members of the MCU, uh, Charlie Cox coming back as Daredevil, um, some other projects that have started filming, and a rumor, a big rumor, two big rumors, uh, Chloe Zhao possibly directing a Star Wars film, um, World War Hulk, we're going to refer to it as WWH because that's a tongue twister for me. Um, and when I texted uh, Brian about this possibility, he tested back with who? Question mark. Ruffalo? Question mark. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, that is the question that we need to answer. And um, some Green Lantern news that we should have gotten at DC Fandom, but we got it later on. So first up, Fandom. The audience for this event was three times the number of last year's event. Brian, to have a somewhat successful outing this first his first go around with last year's event, to have this many eyes coming back to see what else you have to offer. And I'm going to repeat myself again. This was a horrible showing. Horrendous. What do you think? Let me ask you, do you think that next year's will, will most likely be better? And I believe you have the same sort of feeling that this was a disappointment. What are your thoughts with, with people showing up for this and, and, and fandom just being, to me, in my opinion, a great disappointment, uh, other than the Batman, obviously. Yeah, I so I put I put some thought into this after our pod last week when we were reacting to fandom, and I kind of was trying to parse in my mind, like, why? Like, how, why did this happen? So first off, 66 million people watching. That's a great number up from 22 million last year, which says something considering last year, obviously, people were more at home. Yeah, uh, and, and we didn't really have movies, exactly. right? So, it, to, to to deliver that kind of audience this year, I think is is obviously that's a good sign. But it does underscore the concern we raise, which is when you have that many eyes on your projects and you have that many projects in the pipeline, you you need more wow factor. You you need, especially the DC universe, needs to get people on board the train as it's leaving the station for the multiverse, for HBO Max, for all the places they want to take this. Yeah. And I kind of wondered to myself a little bit whether, did, did this suffer a little bit from not being San Diego Comic-Con and New York Comic-Con? And let me explain what I mean by that is, mm -hmm. when, the, when, San, when San Diego Comic-Con was at its peak, and these studios didn't have their own events. There's a competitive dynamic of yeah. you know you can't come to Comic Con mm -hmm. with something second rate to show because you know the studio in Hall H that's got the slot after you or before you is going to be bringing their best heat. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the fact that now these events are a little more self contained to the individual studios whether there's a little more complacency, a little more, hey, we can, if it's a first look or it's a featurette or we're not all the way there, that's okay. We can kind of give a little flavor and we can kick the can of, of you know, real footage and real trailer and real thriller down the road a bit. I just wonder if that's a factor because I just, I can't get around in my head. Again, actual teasers, actual trailers, actual polished sequences with effects were so minimal yeah. at this event. Yeah. 
And not to mention, you know, we've got this Green Lantern news at the end. Why wasn't that at Fandom? That's a big piece of the equation. Green Lantern's a massive hero whose only foray on the big screen was a huge disappointment. Yeah. Why are we hearing about this in the rumor mill afterwards? Yeah. As opposed to having a panel or something. I just, it, it, it spoke to, you know, the absence of Superman, the absence of Green Lantern, the absence of uh, things that we know are happening and we know should and could be big mm-hmm. that were completely swept aside and, and left off the docket at, at yeah. this event. To me, it speaks to possibly some uncertainty in the future of their uh, projects that are being developed. Yeah. Because a lot of them hasn't started yet. And obviously, you know, next year, some new people are coming in to sort of take a look and oversee what's going on and may not go forward with some of these uh, projects, if especially if they haven't started. Um, but Fandom next year probably will be the first real public appearance of the new company yeah with regard to dc properties at least so yeah. at that point the merger is supposed to be cleared and closed you know, new management in place but yeah i would think next year expectations will be very high and a lot of anticipation for what what they put forward but i would have to sort of think about that these people that were putting on this putting on this event have to know that Marvel's going to have their event, and that even though that that sense of competition isn't present because there is no San Diego Comic Con, and you know that they're in the building, you have to know that they're going to have their event too. And judging and Marvel, I'm pretty sure looking from the outside and, 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 and probably seeing some of the disappointment that people have, I'm going to make sure that their event is not disappointing. I think it's just a, a representation of disarray in, in, at, at Warner Brothers DC, whoever's in charge, perhaps not even caring. And, I, and, and I've said in the past that I don't think Warner Brothers really cares about DCIP that much. Their only interest is money. And, and they didn't really put forth a lot of effort in making this or giving us that wow factor that you that you talked about. And to be honest, a lot of the people that were there looked like they were doing community service, man. They did not want to be there. Your thoughts? It's always hard to tell where the line is between studio and filmmakers. Because let's be clear, you when, when we see, you know, whether it's at Comic-Con or whether at these events, you know, most of these projects are, are not finished by the time we get these, which means that it requires prioritization, like the filmmaker, yeah. the editor, the effects team, you have to allocate time and you have to allocate dollars to say, look, even though we're X percent done with the movie and done with post-production or done with filming, we're going to take time out to construct, you know, music, effects, cuts, edits. Yeah. And as we've seen many times in trailers, shots you see in trailers don't actually wind up in the final film. That's always, that's normal. Yeah. But just taking that time of giving the audience, you know, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, two minutes. It, and it's like whatever else you think of the Batman, and obviously not everyone loves it, but you, you cannot dispute its effectiveness in establishing tone, right? To yes. say, we're, we're stamping, this is our take on this character. And you're in that zone immediately. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what a teaser is meant to do, especially with characters like this, where we know of them and, you know, we love them and we're getting, you know, the fourth or fifth iteration in some cases. We just, we want to see like, what world are we going into? Yeah. And to not reward the fans with even a, a, a real taste of that is 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 pretty disappointing. And I, like I said, I'm not exonerating them. I was just trying to process in my mind why, yeah, yeah. why why we could have gotten the output we got. Yeah, but it's all it's all I could really come up with. Yeah, but I agree with you. I think the merger probably had a little more 
impact than people want to admit that there was a little more hold back than people yeah. want to admit but yeah. even so i still don't think that gets you off the hook for at minimum black adam black point um like those two in particular those two especially and yes. maybe you can throw shazam the honorable mention yes the 2022 projects they're coming out next year yeah that's what i'm saying those three i think you had to show a a legit teaser to really get people buzzing and i just i i can't for the life of me figure out that they, not one of them delivered them yeah 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 let us know in the comment section below what you guys think i mean we already asked the question to to get a reaction from you guys regarding you know fandom um but it's just it's just not a good look for them they had some decent announcements but these announcements are more curiosity based for me anyway not excitement um because obviously what i'm curious about is blue beetle um the milestone situation i'm curious about those things and, I, and i'm not superly overly excited because i haven't seen anything i don't know what it looks like um but i'm certainly curious and, and looking forward to see what they have to show um so let us know in the conversation below what you guys think about that and by the way i apologize to those people because i spoiled a, a, a um, bond for everyone when i said he you know at the end of the film that I wish that, you know, oh, I, 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 <laughs> I'm sad. my bad, my bad. Um, but let's stick closely. Did you get to... heat for that from somebody? AJ. Oh, you hadn't seen it yet. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> He's like, yo, thanks, Pablo. And I'm like, oh, man. So my bad, my bad. I, I just, I just said it. Um, but still a good movie. You should go check it out. Um, Let's stick to something that you just said previously regarding Green Lantern. Green Lantern um, supposed to be an HBO series coming out, I think next year. Mm -hmm. From the from the, I read this article and Brian, you sent this to me coming from Heroic Hollywood. Does it? It seems like there's no. It, it, I mean, it, it could be interpreted a different way, it, but based on what he said, and I quote the 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 showrunner mr seth graham smith he says yeah that show is gigantic it has taken quite a bit of time to get to this point and it's just a big big undertaking it's going very it's going really well all i can say is that it's going really well and there are going to be green lanterns in it and it's going to be on hbo it, it, it's just that sort of delivery is just makes it not so not exciting he says, I'll admit, I wasn't a huge comic book kid. I was a huge movie kid. And so my introduction to DC Comics came through the 89 Batman movie. When that movie came out, I was like, oh my God, Batman is the coolest. And I started reading Batman comic books. But Green Lantern is something that, to be honest with you, just came to me later by way of just talking about doing the show. This is a concern for me. The possibility of doing the show led me down a deep dive of Green Lantern lore. We'll see. It's going to be a while before the world gets to see that, but we are very, very busy at work as we speak. Brian, this doesn't sound, this doesn't exude confidence in a show that you're trying to sort of sell to us, right? This, this, this doesn't sound good. And he, and, and the fact that he just got to it and not to say that he can't deliver something great, but I, I, I wish I could see a video of him talking about because that would give me some sort of information as to how excited he is about it. But reading that, I felt like, oh man, this is going to be horrible. What were your thoughts? Well, the, the two questions I asked the first one, which is, and I asked this, you know, why wasn't this at fandom? Um, and, and what I mean by that is, I thought the I thought the Blue Beetle presentation did it right which mm -hmm. is they didn't have any footage. They haven't shot anything, but they had writer, showrunner. They piped in Joel Maraduena to show mm -hmm. him as a star. They gave mm -hmm. you a little flash concept art of the suit. Yeah. And then they talked a little bit about the comic and like what mm -hmm. it means, what the mm -hmm. representation of having, you know, you know, Amy Reyes uh, as, as your lead, like 
it hit all the notes for me of peaking your interest when you don't actually have anything a show yes. that's live yet. Yeah. Why couldn't Green Lantern have done the same? They've made some castings, I believe, at least a couple of the Lanterns. Yes, I believe so. Yes. Why couldn't you have and and Greg Berlanti has? I mean, he is the CW verse. I mean, that <laughs> guy is responsible for Arrow, Flash, Legends of Tomorrow. Like you telling me you can't get him and and Graham Smith with a couple of the cast members talk on about a panel yeah. just to talk about what they want to do and as i said i think there has to be a little sensitivity to they have to know people have been scarred i mean Brian Reynolds makes fun of that mm -hmm. every chance he gets to his credit he makes fun yes. of that yes. because he knows that was a huge misfire Martin Campbell, the director of the movie, has sworn off the genre because of his experience on that. These guys have a chance to start to, you know, build, rebuild some goodwill and, and yeah. sort of, you know, reestablish this character. I don't get it. I don't get why this story comes out the day or two days after DC's biggest event of the year. It makes no sense. To me. Exactly. Exactly. Um, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of this. Uh piece of information regarding the Green Lantern show, it, it really sounds like this is going to be horrible. Let's see. Let's see. And it's a shame because this yeah. show could be great. This character it, in this show could be great in the right hands. It could be, but uh, and, and I'll leave with this last point and you can uh, respond if you'd like. Um, this sounds like a, based on what we know so far, this sounds like a very expen expensive situation. You're dealing with outer space, buddy cop intergalactic. This sounds expensive. And as we know, there's been a lot of great shows that when they go out of they go to outer space, they get canceled after a, 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 a season because it's just too much money. They can't just they, yep. it's unsustainable. Away, right stuff. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I hear you. Space so, shows are not cheap. There's no doubt. So I wonder how they're gonna uh continue if it's if it is a success um if they will continue or how they'll you know if it's bad obviously it's not going to continue but if, they, if it's a success let's see if they can continue a second season possibly i don't know because bt is just in a disarray that I, it's just well, you my, don't know what you're gonna get and my concern that i raised to you is to your point about cost it's well taken which is when you when you turn on a show on the cw and this dates back to Smallville, which it was really nice to see that panel because I love that show. But I love it in part for its campiness, right? The budget was, you know, at the time, the budget was actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. And some of the some of the super powered effects they showed for a TV show were definitely a step up from, say, um, Lois and Clark had been, you know, in yeah. the, whatever it was the decade before. Yeah. But make no mistake, if you're going to go to HBO Max, with this kind of epic scale, you can't be bringing CW level effects. If, if I see like Greg Berlanti verse style, you know, flash effects and arrow effects on this show, somebody should get fired. Because if you're going to do this show, how can you handcuff the budget and not let them showcase the lantern powers the way they're supposed to be it's done? Show. Yeah, yeah. And I'm just, that's my biggest fear is that we're basically going to get Greg Berlanti's version of the CW verse using Green Lantern. And it's going to feel like a show you saw on network TV for the past 10, 15 years. Did and you like Krypton? Well, that was sci fi channel. Um, yeah. yeah, I couldn't, you know, I gotta be honest, I didn't really get into it. I watched the middle of the first season, but I couldn't yeah. stick with it. It just, yeah. you know, you make this point, right? It's like Krypton without Superman is kind of like, these Batman shows without Batman. There's only so far you can get before I need my main, my main, my main people. Yeah. And that, that's, I felt that way about this show. I was yeah. like, yeah, I get it, but I'm not, I'm not there. <laughs> so. Yeah. Let us know what you guys think about um, Green Lantern show. Are you excited about this? I mean, I'm, I understand that the thought of seeing Green Lantern and outer space and all that stuff sounds cool. But this guy, the showrunner, doesn't sound like he. I think he sounds worried a little bit, you know. And I'm sort of worried myself because there's just there's no confidence in 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 his 
I'm not going to say his tone because I didn't see it, him actually saying it, but just reading it sounds, it's just, that it's, I'm, I'm concerned about this. Um, but let us know in the comment section below. Um, next up, Eternals gets his first reaction. There's no, uh, there's a review embargo, uh, obviously, and people are, 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 are permitted to react to the film. And some of the things that I've been hearing, and Brian, you can let me know what you've been hearing, is that some of them say it's great. I haven't heard that it's bad. I've heard that it's, um, the word dense has come up a lot. Um, the expansion of the MCU certainly grows from this. Um, the, the post credit scenes are amazing and got a lot of crowd reaction. I'm assuming from what I've heard, the rumor is that Arrow shows up. Uh, but what have you heard from, you know, what you read on, on Twitter or, or wherever um, about how people are reacting to this, to this film? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm really trying to dial down how much I'm watching or reading at this point. But it, I think there's a lot of parallels, at least in what I've seen, a lot of parallels to how people are absorbing this as to how Dune is being received. Mm -hmm. um, very different property, obviously. But this idea of it's a long film, especially mm -hmm. for an initial film. It's like it's two hours and 40 minutes. That is mm -hmm. a, I mean, that kind of says Marvel's got a lot of confidence in it, if nothing else. Yeah. But I think people are saying, you know, on the one hand, there's a camp of people. I've seen the word masterpiece thrown around. Okay. Um, so there's, and that, and, and it does seem like the people who love Dune, it's a ten out of ten. Like if if you're if they love it, they're giving it nine out of tens and ten out of tens, four and a half stars, five star, like almost max ratings. Mm -hmm. The people who don't like it, you mentioned the word dense, and I think you know it comes up with both. The Dune, the book is complex. People feel bogged down. People feel like it's slow. Mm -hmm. This one, it feels like not necessarily that it's slow, but that it's it's different. The character mix is different. And so it maybe asks something different of you, the viewer, versus maybe some of the easier watches that Marvel's given you. You know, you, Iron Man 1, like some of these intro stories, yeah. it's easy no. to jump in. You kick back. You know, you just go along for the ride. It sounds like this one, maybe you kind of got to think and pay attention. And, and I love that. And I love I that. Think, look, I mean, I think Marvel needed to try it. So I'm actually, yeah. when I read this stuff, I'm kind of like, well, okay. So it sounds like they did actually give her the latitude to. Mm -hmm. um, but I have seen consensus also on the piece that we would expect, which is that visually it looks amazing. That that the the look of it, the sunset shots, the action, the effects, that it does look very high level and very polished. I haven't seen anyone who was like, well, this looks kind of cheap and, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, has, it wasn't executed well. So I think you know, the reaction is definitely, I mean, this is going to be rated fresh, but like I said, Dune is about 88% of Rotten Tomatoes. But like I said, no, if, that's you go pretty in good. There, if you go in there, you'll see like if the negative reviews, you know, they're down. They're like, they'll give it like a three out of 10 or four out of 10, mm -hmm. but the people who love it give it a nine out of 10, which is a little bit unusual. So yeah. I'm expecting a little bit similar here, like a score in the eighties and the people who swear by it, like really ride for it. Mm -hmm. And the people who are out are just like, yeah, I don't get it. And it's yeah. much, too much for me, so. It's almost like there are those people who love the Eternals, the actual comic book. Um, and there, there's some that don't, but for those who like it, they love it. And it seems to be translating over to movies. Um, Robert Meyer Burnett is his name. He he's usually on John Campier's show and he described, he feels like Chloe J Zhao's pitch was what if this was Prometheus, but told from the perspective of the engineers, right? Um, and it makes a lot of sense. Um, it's very, is a very complex movie, and I think this is just one of these movies that Marvel has. You know, of course, they they listen to this formula label being thrown around at, at what they do, and and they're trying to do something different. And I respect that, and 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 I want them to, you know, 
um, go for it, right? If they're going to be different um, with some of these characters, because the, you're going to lose people. And they, I have a question. I, I came up with a new segment, Brian. It's called the question of the day. Okay. Um, and we'll address that at the end of this uh, when we get down to the list of topics that, that we discuss. Um, but they're trying something. They're trying something different. And, and, and we knew from get that with Chloe Zhao, we're going to get that different movie and this is going to be it and some and this is honestly something i've been looking forward to for quite some time and it's finally here almost and people have seen it and they and and for those people who call it dense hey listen i love momentum you got to watch it a few times inception you got to watch it a few times i don't mind it as long as the performances are good the visuals are good the story is good you know, you may have to watch it a couple of times to understand what the hell we're, 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 we're dealing with here. But I'm, I'm, I'm still all in for this. Yeah, I agree. I mean, look, I mean, I'm also, the, I'm very much the target audience. Like to me, this is effectively Marvel mythology. And, yeah. you know, if, if as a kid growing up, my, my, my father loved ancient history, loved ancient Greece, ancient Rome. So I grew up learning all about gods, heroes, myths, and I gobbled that stuff up. Yeah. If you're a kid in class who glazed over when they when they got to that section of history, <laughs> yeah, you might get lost in this and be like, yeah. what, what? Why can't I see Superman? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm very interested. I mean, the concepts are very interesting. And I, I'm also, as always, you know, we're always interested to see how this links back to where we're headed in the in the next phase as as well i, I did think one of the th interesting things that i referenced superman was chloe Zhao's kind of this thing has come out because that there's that clip of icarus talking to the kid and the kid invokes superman's name mm -hmm. and chloe Zhao got asked about this which is mm -hmm. like what's up with superman does he exist like what's the yeah and and she said she kind of like well it was my it was me she's like that was my idea and she just said, look, I mean, why can't, why can't there be a world where the characters are at least aware of each other or at least aware of the, in this case, it would be like the literary yes. televised form. Yes. And yes. they've consumed, you know, Richard Donner and Christopher Reeve. And that's what the kid's talking about. And that's what Icarus is responding to. Not necessarily that like there's a Marvel DC crossover happening. Yes. That's not yes. what she was going for. I was like, that's fine. I don't have a problem yeah. with that. Me neither. If you've ever read um the justice league comic book uh where the white martians are involved i forget the the name of the the, the storyline but in in one of those panels i think the white marshes have some superheroes tied up and if you look at them they look like marvel superheroes one of them actually is straight up like wolverine <laughs> so it's like this happens, so it's not a big deal, you know. It's it's cool, it's funny, is is you know. But it's, there's no shade or, or malicious intent or negativity being thrown at DC characters. So, um, if people have a problem with that, it, it, it's just one of those things you just you got to sort of just relax with it, right? Exactly. <laughs> so let us know in the conversation below what you guys think of what people are saying regarding the Eternals uh, movie. Next up, Harry Styles is rumored to be cast as, I mean, not rumored, this is sort of confirmed, yeah. that he will be playing Eros, Thanos' brother. And I'm curious, I mean, I'm hoping that we get us to see a little bit more Thanos. I don't know if... I, I, this, I, I'm wondering. I don't. Nobody. Nobody's mentioned it. If Thanos actually shows up in this film as a younger version, um, but what's because for me, I don't recall ever really knowing too much about the character other than the comic books, but very little. I wonder what sort of. Um, presence he'll have moving forward in other in other films um, when it comes to cosmic entities and stuff like that um, but the casting I think is perfect and this has been rumored for for quite some time already 
and we've just sort of, you know, this is just confirmation as to that rumor being true. Uh, but what are your thoughts? Um, I would say Harry Styles' movie career um, mirroring his music career. He, for a guy who doesn't have a lot on the IMDb, he's, he's been already been in a Chris Nolan Academy Award nominated war movie, and now he's going to be in a Marvel universe. Yeah. Like, it's a pretty good way to start. Yeah. <laughs> after obviously all the success on stage. So yeah, look, I mean, Arrow's the polar opposite of Thanos, obviously is a virtuous character, a loving character. I think I saw the quote people were, I mean, fans of Harry Styles were like, Harry's just being Harry to be this part. So yeah, yeah. Um, but you're right. I mean, where does this character go? Thanos, obviously, they, they, it was a famous arc opposite the Avengers that they were building up to. Where do they want to, where do they want this character to go? Is this character like a fun, sideshow and kind of drop in drop out is this yeah. leading to a real central you know um feature where he's going to be mainline like i that's all that's all tbd but yeah um i mean maybe this is you know this there is a little part of me that sees this and it's kind of like okay we have officially entered that phase where marvel's the it thing and everyone wants to be a part of it and like yeah. marvel reciprocates that by saying well who are some of the who are some of the flex gets we can add to the fall sheet yeah like, yeah 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 getting getting harry styles to be uh, a god <laughs> yeah that would that would qualify <laughs> yeah oh uh, it'll be interesting to see if he tells some stories about uh thanos and their relationship if they had one i don't know but uh yeah let us know in the comments below what you guys think of uh the casting for eros um and harry styles playing him and i i, I i'm pretty sure it'll be interesting see where they go with this next up ch next up um Ch charlie cox um talks about his possible return right we already know it's getting kind it, of funny now yeah it's like come on it's happening we know charlie cox is gonna probably be not probably he's gonna be in no way home i someone told me that he's in it Someone that cl works closely on the set of No Way Home said that he's in it. And he sort of talks about that if they were to do Daredevil and he's cast, that it would be sort of a reimagining of the character somewhat. Um, he, he also threw the if they recast it and they re this there's no recast he's going to be daredevil so let's forget about the the extra stuff he threw in there just so that he <laughs> so he can throw off the dogs that's what he did but is it's it's him he's going to be daredevil i don't think it's going to be too much of a different uh take again what they did originally with the, with daredevil was in my opinion was fantastic that third season if you guys haven't seen it you need to see it um and kevin knows it and again the show didn't really shy away from the events that happened in the first avengers they mentioned it they called it the event um so i don't really think it'll be too much of a difference what are your thoughts yeah look i think the the humor in this is so you remember when andy circus was doing the venom promotion and they were asking him about the spider-man crossover and he's like oh of course it'll happen someday and like he knew obviously that like it was yeah. happening and yeah and and now by the way we, we got kevin's confirmation afterwards that like yes he just said a lot of planning went into that and how it was shown right so now you have Charlie Cox saying, well, I'm not saying I'm doing it, but if I did, <laughs> like, he obviously knows from the conversations that have been had, what's on the table and how they want to take the, where they want to take this character. Right. So that's why he's talking about this reimagining idea, which is they're not going to rob his Matt Murdock of his soul, mm -hmm. but clearly they're, you know, this character needs to inhabit PG 13 properties and probably needs to inhabit an R rated world too. So that yeah. there's your reimagining, right? How does he fit when you drop him into a Spider Man movie versus when he has his own show, whether it's on Hulu or what have you? 
Yeah. That's going to look and feel probably a little bit different than the Hell's Kitchen that was shown to us in the Netflix show. That yeah. that's kind of how I think of reimagining. I don't think he's being asked to like play the character different. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Change yeah, yeah. your tune or change your identity. That's not what we're asking. You know, I'm sure the costume will get tweaked. Maybe the, you know, he always seemed to revert to the original black suit with the, the head ba- You know, the head headpiece. That yeah. might that might get retired. They yes, 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 yes. More yes, classic yes. look. You know, more often. But yeah, no. They the the S they, if they're gonna bother to hire all these people back, it's not because they want to then gut the essence of what they did at Netflix. They're yeah. hiring them because of what they did at Netflix. So exactly. They want, to, they want to keep the spirit of that. But I yes. just think it's funny because he clearly knows. I'm yeah. sure he's even seen like storyboards and script ideas at this point, and he's just kind of hinting to you what it what you Could might be. be in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, for, listen. I get the, you know, Daredevil PG thirteen and 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 some aspect of his uh, life is rated R, and especially when he goes out at nights to, to get information. For his character, yes, that makes sense. That he's one of those characters you can put in PG-13 situations and obviously move into rated R. But there's certain characters you really can't do that with. For example, The Punisher. And John Bernthal yeah. already has stated that, you know, if he's going to come back, He's going to have to come back to that rated R world because Punisher is rated R. You may have PG-13. Everybody has a PG-13 PG and a rated R side to them, right? Um, some people are just rated R all day long, and some people are PG-13, and they have to go in those worlds. And But Punisher is straight up rated R in terms of the things he does and the things that he's thinking about doing. So if he returns John Bernthal, which makes sense, which I think, you know, again, that um, what's that show on, on Hulu that's supposed to be coming out, the animated rated off uh, uh, show? Uh, Killer. The, the, the monkey one? Yes. Yeah. Hit monkey. Yeah. Hit monkey. Yeah. This is their little test into that rated R world and then putting it on Hulu. And again, I don't think, I think. Marvel is really considering moving some of these characters that are in that world over to Hulu, which only makes sense because I don't think they belong on Disney. The, this show in particular, though, represents a unique challenge. I think this show, you know, if they do Jessica Jones, if they do Punisher, I, was, I don't think there's anything else that Marvel has reacquired where you would say, the bar is really high and they better not screw it up. I think because X-Men in its current state went out on a low note. Fantastic Four has never gotten off low notes. Blade yeah. came back off a low. I think obviously the original Blade is a good film, but Blade Trinity, ye, not, not so good. But these shows were critically acclaimed. These shows for the people who saw them and the people who reviewed them were top shelf television. Yes. So here is the rare instance where Marvel got something back and it's not broke. So they have to figure out how to kind of adapt and grow it, but not screw it up. Very yeah. interested to see what that looks like. Yeah. It's the only instance we've seen of that. Yes. Very good point. Yeah. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of Charlie Cox's uh, um, return and how he will be reimagined so to speak according to him next up marvel delays some of the movies that they've been already previously had that dates for and kevin feige was like hey we gotta change some things up Oh, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty as to why there are some speculation as to why. Brian, what are your, what do you think, Ke- or, or why do you think Kevin Feige has um, go ahead and delayed some of these films and rearranged some of the, their release dates? 
Well, I think, I think the number one reason is the interconnected nature. So if you're going to make one change, you automatically are making more than one change in this universe. And no other film universe where that's true. I think Guardians 3 is literally the only film that did not change its calendar okay. date. And so I'm sure given the linkages and now given the linkages to TV shows, I'm sure these moves will have impacts on Disney Plus release dates as well. Um, and so, you know, I think, and the nice thing, the one nice thing is because they have so many dates planted, it allows them the flexibility to just kind of mix and match and push everything back. Oh, you take the one behind you and then you take the one behind you. Yeah, yeah. Can I ask the conspiracy theory question? Because I texted this to you half joking, but I at least want to ask the question. Okay. So the Batman comes out March 4th. Doc Strange 2 was supposed to come out real tight to that date. Yeah, that's that. Just from a competitive standpoint. Is that. Do you think there's any chance they wanted to space those out? Of course. Absolutely. And they won't admit it, but like... Of course. I don't know that you want to go head to head with Batman. Of course. March is Batman month. That's what that is. And they don't want to compete. Or not necessarily that they're going out to compete, but they just want to let the Batman breathe a little bit because it's gonna... Again, they want to maximize their box office and they don't want to be in the same vicinity in terms of Batman being out and people choosing to go see the Batman because it was that great. And while they have this other movie, Doc Strange, although I think, I think it's gonna do very well at the box office, uh, same audience. Yeah. That's the yes. issue. The same yes. audience. Yes, exactly. You got to share screens with with a movie that, if it does really well, week three, it's still going to be pulling lots of lots it, of money. It, exactly. I I think it's that as well. I think more so is that, in my opinion, and I think it only makes sense for for them to go about it that right, way because, listen, this movie, the Batman, and and I don't want to go into another ten minutes rant about the Batman, but. This movie has maintained its hype from last year. And it's continued from this trailer. It's even amped it up even more, which is really hard to do. When you're so excited about something and then you see something else and you even, that's hard to do. And they've done it. Yeah, I mean, very quietly, and I think people forget this because of the Snyderverse, because we saw a Batman on screen in Ben Affleck. But we have not, seen, when this movie comes out, we will not have seen a Batman solo film for 10 years. Dark Knight Rises was 2012. Time flies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. wow. Go yes. back since, since Tim Burton in 1989. That is by far the longest drought of a Batman movie. Because you had Batman, Batman Returns was 89 and 92. By 95, we had Joel Schumacher and Batman Forever. Batman yeah. Robin is 97. That obviously set the franchise back. Yeah. We had to wait eight years to get Batman Begins. Yeah. So 10 years. That's a long time for a Batman solo film. And I realize, like I said, we, we have Batfleck in, in the meantime, but which means the audience will be there. The audience is ready for batman his yes. own film his own story and yeah look i mean these these studios know they kind of play nice in the sense of they know that for everyone to win for their own property to win they have to find a space on the calendar where there's relatively little competition and because of the pandemic we've talked about this many times it is hard to find those windows where there aren't other blockbuster films so you got to pick and choose but you're just not going to ever see you know, I remember like um, in the summer of 2012 and people were like, oh, is Avengers going to make more money or is Dark Knight Rise is going to make more money? Yeah, listen, those movies were two and a half months apart. Yeah. Like, it's not like they lined them up two weeks apart and said, we're going to go head to head. That's yeah, yeah, never yeah. going to happen. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. And think about this for a moment and, and, and this last point before we move on. And I want to hear what you have to say regarding this. 
the tones are going to be so different that if they were to be close and people are going to be coming off the high of the Batman, that to go to Doctor Strange 2, although it's something that people have been waiting for, they just want to let people get off that high of the Batman and into something new rather than have it so close to and still be on that high that you start comparing the two films, which are two different films, but in terms of how it makes you feel will make Doctor Strange possibly, I'm just saying possibly, not feel as good as the Batman. When people talk about fatigue, there is, this is a form of fatigue where you could have legitimately good properties, but if they're too close to each other, you just don't appreciate the one you see second. The one you see first, you're going to be at 100%. The one you, yeah. if it's great, the one you see second, you might be at like 90%. You know, yeah. you might be like still kind of basking in the glow of the last one a little bit. And it's even though you're not really supposed to compare them, you kind of inevitably will. So yeah. I agree with you. You you want that gap, you want that yeah. space. And like the MCU, we, we don't, we, you know, the identity is set. And like that Doc Strange 2, very excited for it, very excited to have the stakes be raised. But make no mistake, you know, Doc Strange 1 is a fine film. Doc Strange one does not compare to a great Batman film. They are no. those no. two things are not in the same zip code. Yes. Sorry, all due I'm respect not. to Doc Strange two, they're not like Dark yeah. Knight in two thousand eight versus Doc Strange one. That's not a conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. It's, 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 there's two different things. Uh, yes, yeah, let us know in the conversation below what you guys think of the delays and uh, is Marvel sort of not trying to be in the same vicinity as the Batman and letting it do its thing before they come back to theaters. Uh, let us know in the comment section below. Next up, Secret Invasion, Mando Season 3, Gardens 3 are all shooting. Um, but I have to ask, Disney's doing a lot. Disney is doing a lot and they have all these things coming up. Secret Invasion just started again, season Secret Invasion starting, Mando season three starting, which is something that we've been sort of waiting for because everybody loves the Man Mandalorian and there have been nothing um, in terms of news that they had started filming. And so now we get that news and Guardians 3, all we were hearing was about the holiday specials, like, okay, the holiday, you know, whatever. But, and, and now Guardians 3, we had the, 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 the announcement of Will, what's his last name? Will Poulter. Will Poulter as Adam Warlock. Very interesting. What did you think? What well, I you go for it? You you've been you have been pitching this character. You've been wanting this all the way since they showed the cocoon back in uh, like original. Yeah, I, I was actually thinking about it a few days ago, and I'm like, how did when it, when it was announced, and now we know that Adam Warlock is coming. For me, and I've you know, if you talk to Alex, Alex, you know, he talked to me about the first. Um, series of Adam Warlock and, and how good it was written and whatever. But I was I, I started reading some of it because he let me have some of the comics to read and stuff. I wasn't that really into it. I was only into Adam Warlock during the the Infinity Saga. Infinity Saga, yeah. Now that that's gone, is he just going to be this guy that at first he's going to be the, the antagonist and then perhaps towards the end he's going to revert and then after that what 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 role will he play this is the same similar question that we asked of arrows but adam warlock is 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 a pivotal character in certain events what events will perhaps in secret invasion uh, secret secret wars who knows but what event will he play a pivotal role and will will he be um, some? Will he be a character that people enjoy? Because he's very, you know, he's very like not boring, 
but he's not very exciting somewhat to me. And only in those pivotal moments, such as the Infinity Saga, which I Infinity Gauntlet, which I I, I loved in the comics. And he was he was a quarterback. He was Tom Brady. What do you think of this casting and and your thoughts on all the stuff that's going on for Marvel? Because they have a lot on their plate. I so casting came out of left field. Yeah, you know, my, my like the way Adam Warlock is drawn. Now, granted, he I don't know he he obviously hatches from the cocoon, so there's like a infancy and development stage. But I think of him more in his adult form, and Will Poulter strikes me as a little young looking. Mm-hmm relative mm-hmm. to how I think he's drawn and portrayed. Yeah. Are you, so for, for, for context, I mean, the, the over under on times that Pablo mentioned when like between Avengers one guardians one, and when we finally got to infinity war, I was gotta be like 10,000 times. You, you mentioned yeah, me. like, yeah, I was... Where is he? He's gotta be, <laughs> he has to bring them together. So, you mentioned it, which is so. My twofold key question back to you is: If he can't do what, if he can't be the quarterback of the Infinity Saga and rally the Avengers, do you worry the characters being wa- going to be wasted? And and two, I don't think you would have worried about him being introduced in a Guardians movie if you knew he was then going to be in the Infinity Saga movies. Do you worry he's going to be too James Gunned now that he's not in that saga and we don't exactly know where he's headed? Those are two concerns. Is he going to be too James Gunned? And um, what was that first? Uh, well, just that the, that, that the character would be itself wasted. will be largely yes. wasted or just sidelined. because he I, 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 I'm concerned about that. Yes, I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned... Because, again, to me, he wasn't very excited in the comics. To me, you know, there's a lot of people out there who who, who really enjoyed um, the Adam Warlock comic books and find them very, very interesting. But I don't know with James Gunn's way of movie making and 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 humor. I mean, I'm, I'm quite sure, I mean, you, and you said it, he's he's going to be hatching out of his cocoon. He's going to be very childlike. So there's going to be those moments where he's doing, you know, kid, not kid stuff, but very immature in his thinking and how he makes decisions that might be funny. But it's, it's a huge risk. It's a huge risk. This is not like Rocket Raccoon where you can, you know, do something with that character like Bradley Cooper did and just made him someone everyone adores in in in, in the comic in in the movies. I don't know how you make Adam War like that. Right? Um I don't know. I don't know. It's very concerning. I think is a huge risk and it might be a waste of a character. It might fall into the bucket of Batista. Yeah, I mean, it also, to your point, even even beyond the Infinity Saga, I mean, the linkages to Thanos, Lady Death, there's pieces here that you kind of feel like almost have to come with this. And so, like, obviously, we're in multiverse territory. So it does, when you put this together with, like, Harry Styles, it does make me think that Brolin's coming back at some point. I can't see anyone being Thanos, but I also feel like, there's too many of these characters who are like centrally connected to Thanos to where, mm. how are you get, it's like, how are you going to get through all the stories you want to get to without a Thanos multiversal reappearance? Yeah. I mean, you, you, you have, you put into question the, the, or into consideration the multiverse and another version of Thanos being around and how that may play out if they do decide to go that route. Yeah. And you also have, Adam Warlock's co- counterpart of future self, the Magus. Um, I don't know how 
um, you put that in there for future use. Um, there's a lot of possibilities that they can go with, but. And remember, what if already gave you Thanos twice? So yes. I'm just pointing that out. This is where I was sort of like, is what if test driving some things that you might actually see on the, on the big screen? But we saw kind of the sidekick happy go lucky yes. Thanos, and then we saw yeah. Thanos full power gauntlet get served. Spoiler yes. alert! Yeah. In, in, yeah. in the yeah. very cool episode. But yes, yeah. yeah, so I wonder if if that means it's a lot, a lot, lot more questions and concerns for Adam Warlock than um, than excitement for this character. But yeah. Um, and then on the shooting, so let's talk about yes. the shooting a little bit because you mentioned the busy slate. Um, yeah, the, the 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 Marvel shooting pace is definitely continuing to run ahead of schedule. I mean, like Secret Invasion already up and running. I think it tells you like there is some connection between that and the movie schedule as well. Like they have to get some of these shows cranked and live mm -hmm. to fit them into the timeline of the films but you know secret evasion is a big one obviously that's a that's one that's got a killer cast um brings back nick fury and uh and uh, obviously then sort of keeps us on online for for secret wars too at some point so i feel like that's a that's a big one mandalorian i think the, the biggest thing for me was it sort of confirms the return of star wars to the consciousness starting with book of fat you know we really kind of a it, after the the kind of sour taste of Rise of Skywalker, you know, the, and then you kind of got Mando season two brought it back around a little bit with Luke Skywalker appearance, but you kind of been Star Wars free, really, you know, for this yeah. year, and now you get to Book of Fett, now you got Obi Wan, you got Cassian Andor, yes. and then you you know now you get confirmation that Mando's coming back in season three, and you're like, okay, now Star Wars is is off and running on on the service. And so that's kind of what I interpreted. It was like, all right, so if we're getting a shooting in Mando now, fourth quarter of 2021, Christmas of 2022, probably is when you're looking at a release date. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, let us know in the comments section below what you guys think of uh, uh, Marvel's um, content and how much they're doing. And speaking of... Hmm. Star Wars. There is a lot of speculation regarding Kevin Feige's Star Wars. As you know, he's been wanting, you know, he's a big, he's a huge fan of the Star Wars um, series and uh, the show, the, the, and the movies. He, he's a big fan. And he, uh, been asked or he probably asked if he can do a Star Wars film and it's possible and I believe Chloe Zhao has been asked about whether or not she would do or direct a Star Wars film if she were to be asked by Kevin Feige and as you mentioned in via text she was asked about this and she didn't deny it. And she said, what did she say? She said she would have no problem in doing it, correct? So she was asked multiple times. The first time she was asked, she basically intimated, stay tuned. Can't really talk about that. Something going on. The second time she was asked, it was specifically about, would you do the Kevin Feige Star Wars movie? And she said, absolutely. I'll do what Kevin asked me to do. I think it all, I mean, all signs kind of point to so that, yeah. the Kevin Feige Star Wars movie with Michael Waldron writing and Chloe Zhao directing, which is like. <laughs> Listen, there's a lot of pressure, Dick, Brian. There's a lot of pressure. Pressure not that you won't deliver, but that you will deliver and be asked to deliver again. <laughs> that is the problem. Well, we just have to wait and see because that's like, the, that's like the dream team right now a little bit i mean i mean it's like they, you know we talk about kevin feige playing in the star wars sandbox and he's like you know have some fun with this oh right let me let me go to the bullpen <laughs> let me go to the bullpen bring in my all-stars it's not gonna be a fair fight yeah man and listen i don't Envy, envy Kevin Feige, I, although I do a little because he's doing 
Oh no, we envy Kevin Feige. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's probably yeah, on like yeah, yeah. ten people on the face of the earth who you <laughs> you wouldn't mind trading places with. He's on he's on the list. I think. <laughs> yeah, because he's he's just to be able to do what I you know I I've always thought of it to myself like what if you would do something like this in 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 movie in movie form and and create this world and he's doing it and he's had tremendous success and now he you know he wants to do a star wars film and they're not going to say no to him and and if he's going to do it he's going to do it right right he's going to go all in but what scares me is that he he does such a fantastic job that the fans are going to be clamoring for more right um let's see man let's see I, i'd like to hear from people out there what they think about this possibility of koi zao directing a, a, a star wars film if it turns out to be anything uh, close to what the eternals what i think will be visually and story wise um this is just a no-brainer and i don't see her saying no to this uh, uh yeah so, no, i i agree and i think yeah, we're going to get the visual we're going to get chloe zhao's blockbuster visual palette coming in two weeks and if it's what we think it's going to be you know the idea of lightsaber duels at sunset in actual <laughs> sets i mean come on <laughs> it's like this, yeah it's just catnip for star wars fans i know so, right yeah. it's like yeah. that's just a, that's a with writing right that's there. on par with the loki series yeah man it's 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 I have a free throw right there. That's easy right there. Yeah. And that's to say that it's easy because, I mean, it's, it'll be hard because you got to really understand that genre, the, 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 that, that, the, the lore, the canon. And, 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 but these people are professionals and thus far they haven't missed really. And, uh, yeah, I think everybody would be on board with that, man. The, I think to your point, the risk is if this is all true, and my guess is we're going to find out either at the Disney Plus day or at D23. Yeah. We'll get we'll get the confirmations of something like this, I would think. If this is all true, they do it so well that the fans come for them and say, you got to remake the last trilogy. <laughs> and then I just say, like, no, come on, man. Don't, don't, do, don't do that. Don't do yeah. that. I think if, but let's say they, 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 they say, okay, let's do it, right? They think real hard about it and they decide to do it. They're going to recast and get Sebastian Stan as Luke Skywalker. I'm calling it right now. They're going to do it. They're going to do it. Um, our final topic, before we have another segment that I just want to ask a question, it's a question that we, I think we need to ask ourselves. But before we get to that, um, there's a rumor that just recently reared its head the past few days regarding World War Hulk being in development and i'm fine with that although a, a little bit um disappointed that we can't get the full story of that world war war hog i'm gonna refer to it as wwh because it's a tongue twist so obviously we know that that story um continues from the point of planet hulk planet hulk we all know um comes to us from well they they borrowed a lot of the same uh story from um planet hulk in thor ragnarok which was very disappointing because i would have loved to have seen a planet hulk live action play out because remember there's a lot of um characters involved in that especially in the beginning which leads to the circumstance of sending a hulk out you got to be you have to have serious conversations to do what they did to the hulk illuminati which which um uh, involves the the professor x Iron Man, Tony Stark, Mr. Fantastic himself, Reed Richards, um, the guy from the Inhumans, the king of the Inhumans. Oh, Black Bolt. Black Bolt, 
and some others, I believe. I think Submariner, those guys. They said, yo, this dude is too dangerous. We got to put him on a spaceship and send him to another planet. They send the Hulk to another planet. He land his his I guess the planet that he was supposed to go gets detoured because of, something hit the spaceship, and he ends up on some planet where he's recruited to fight as a gladiator, and so on and so forth. He finds his peace. He gets married. He's about to have a child, and the spaceship is rigged to explode, and it, and explodes, and it kills everyone he loves. Um. Sakar, I believe the the, the, mm -hmm. the the planet's name. He's enraged. He goes on to get his revenge on the individuals that are uh, responsible for this. Right. The story goes on from there. There's, there's a little twist at the end, but it's a very it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic story. I don't know how they're gonna do this, but if they do go do this i mean obviously you know the infinity gauntlet was changed and i loved what they did to 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 that storyline and i'm pretty sure they'll do something similar with the world war hulk and it'll be great whatever but we just can't have ruffalo do it i'm sorry we gotta get somebody else man. we gotta get somebody else brian what do you think of the possibilities and do you want ruffalo to play the hulk uh, so the the practical question is, I, where do the I'm still I'm still not clear where the rights stand on this because remember there was Universal was in the picture for a solo Hulk film that was why Hulk couldn't have a solo film for the yeah. longest time he could only appear in the ensembles and R Mark Ruffalo at one point made it seem like that that it basically was impossible to get a true solo Hulk feature film off the ground so yeah. this rumor I, I immediately caveat with like I, I need some legal clarity on, on yes. where this stands. Yes. Look, I'm with you. I think I, I'm. I, I I do not uh, crusade against this Hulk to the same degree that you do. But where I I I completely agree with you is the Hulk as we have him now is not in any way, shape, or form positioned to participate in the storyline you're talking about. That's the biggest problem. Yeah. He's, you know, now obviously we saw. Okay, spoiler alert, Shang-Chi, we see Bruce Banner as an older Bruce Banner with his injured arm. So who knows? Maybe his days of hulking are done anyway. But the Professor Hulk lovable teddy bear character that we got in Endgame, I mean, yeah, you 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 could put him in World War Hulk. That's a 30-second movie. He'd be wasted in the first fight that he comes across. That's the point. The, for that... For Planet Hulk and World War Hulk to work, you need Hulk at his raging finest, right? Yes. Where he's a threat to heroes and villains alike, this unstoppable force of nature. We got to get back to that. Yeah. And I just, I don't see the vehicle for it right now. She-Hulk doesn't strike me as a series where you're going to reestablish that. No. They're saying it's a legal comedy. <laughs> legal, you, you don't put... Raging Hulk in legal comedy. <laughs> and so, and if Ruffalo is still damaged from his use of the gauntlet, he's not that version. Like, there's no version of that Hulk that's really capable of going into that storyline. Mm -hmm. So it kind of leads you to it's multiversal, right? It kind of leads you to it. They almost need another Hulk from a different universe to do this. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's the path to having a recasting. It sounds to me like Ruffalo kind of wants out anyway. It sounds to me like kind of wants to hand this. What off. makes you think that? What, what has he said? Uh, anything I, I don't know. It just recently? felt like in between the She-Hulk series and, um, you know, I, one of the thoughts I had when I saw him in the post-credit scene of Shang Chi was him kind of saying like, "Dude, I'm I'm done wearing these dots, man. Like, I just want to do the motion. I don't want to do the mocap and the makeup anymore. Like, if I'm gonna show up." take the serum out of me, I'll, I'll clock in as myself and act. Mm -hmm. But I, that, that was sort of the first thing that went through my head was like, he just doesn't want to, like, you know how in um, in X-Men, the further we went, Je you saw a lot more of Jennifer Lawrence and a lot less of Blue Mystique. <laughs> Same idea. You got a light blue. 
That, that was my like <laughs> feeling about it. So it kind of felt like a guy who was like, I'm looking for a good handoff and a good send off. And I'm yeah. with you. We're ready for a younger, angrier, unleashed Hulk. And if you do that, if you give us that, then you I'm all get in. to that storyline. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with you 100%, man. It needs to be someone else. I hope it is someone else. Uh, because this Hulk in the sling is just, it, it, uh, it just guts me every time I see it because it's just, it does, the Hulk in this, it's like Wolverine in crutches. Come on. It doesn't make sense, man. It just doesn't make sense. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of this possibility and whether or not uh, Ruffalo should be in the titular role of the Hulk. Uh, do we need a change? And I believe we do, man, because it's time to bring back what the Hulk has been all this time and is a raging monster, which he, but he has a side to him that he understands somewhat between good and bad. It's just sometimes he's, he's just out of control. And someone needs to bring him in or something needs to trigger that side of him. He needs to see something. I don't know, a kid. I don't know. But well, I think, look, we that was one aspect of the Norton Hulk that they got right. Yeah. Is That's why I think that's the best one. Yeah. Like when he gets out of control, he gets out of control. And they <laughs> show that several times in the movie. And then it's it's Betty, obviously, who winds up being the one thing that can kind of reset him. In, yeah, yeah. Um, and I was, in this segment, I wanted to ask a question. I had a couple of questions, but I'll just keep this one. This is a little bit not controversial, but it, it's worth a discussion, man, because people say things that just don't make sense to me. Um, and this is sort of off topic. This is this is why is you know question of the day sort of situation. Is The Rock the greatest action hero, uh, actor of our time? He's made 10.5, according to him, he's made $10.5 billion at the box office. By that, if you, if you had to measure it by that alone, then you would say yes, but there was something that he mentioned in, in fandom that he said, we, the fans, are his number one boss. Am I correct, Brian? Did he say that? Yeah, he did say that. If that is the case, I didn't ask for no Rampage. I didn't ask for no San Andreas. I didn't ask for Skyscraper. We did ask for Black Adam a long time ago. So to say, I've been trying to do, no, you haven't. You've been trying to do truck driving and all these other films a long time ago. Uh, you know, you, you, that's what you've been doing, these, your, your things. And listen, people, you know, you ha he, he has a lot of fans. I think he's great. He, ha he, he has a certain presence on screen that you'd watch. I haven't watched Rampage, San Andreas. I've caught glimpses of it, but I just, uh, not me, no, I, no thanks. I've seen some good films of him. Uh, Gridiron Gang, I liked very much. Wal uh, Walking to All, I like that one. But these other things, these action things, no. I have not been that interested. I'd rather watch Predator 10 times than watch one of his films. Not because they're bad films, but, but they don't, to me, Predator is a classic. Rambo is a classic. Die Hard. Yeah. What, 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 this is not even a comment. This is really a question? Who's asking this question? People, rock fans. They, they put this so guy they're using on a, the unadjusted for inflation. Exactly. Total box office. Exactly. And saying, this guy who's made a lot of movies. Yes. A lot. The, yes. So they're just counting the total box, worldwide box office. You want like 20 seasons of Patrick Ewing or you want Michael Jordan's <laughs> 13? 
<laughs> we is anyone having this conversation? Yeah. Okay. Right. You want your six titles, right? That's kind of what yeah. you usually want. Yeah. So what are the rocks? What are the rocks six action championships? Films. None. What are what give me one? Give me one. Give me one film that he's made that's been by him. I don't mean ensemble where 50 years from now, a hundred years from now, people are still going to watch it and remember it and care about it. None. The only movie I would argue that he's been a part of that will live forever is fast five. I yes. Think that is yes. a transcendent action film in many ways. Yes. I agree. <laughs> and he added to it. Make no mistake. That yes. movie is in part what it is because of him. Yes, correct. But he did not make the Fast and the Furious franchise. I can't yes. give him that. Yes. Okay. So you already mentioned several. So let's talk about the actors behind that. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, where where is the Rock's run that equates to Commando, to Predator, to the Running Man, to Total Recall, to Terminator and Terminator 2, to True Lies in a 10-year yes. span? Every one of those films will live past any one of the rocks. Yes. Individual action films. Yes. And Sylvester Stallone put out Rambo 2 and Rocky 4 within like a six month period. Like, yes. And, I, you know, I, I think the guy that people, people sleep on in some ways with regard to action, but if you step back and look, Harrison Ford, granted, he's not the only person in Star Wars. But he takes Star Wars and he does become Indiana Jones. And Indiana Jones becomes Jack Ryan. And even kind of caps it off with a little Air Force One at the end. Yeah, Those are huge hits. Huge but hit certainly hit. the Indiana Jones, Star Wars, Tom Clancy triumvirate. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why those films are still on TV all the time. Yeah. And made the bank. That, and if you want to adjust for inflation, they make billions too yeah. in today's money and then we've talked about even like i you know again it's a different brand but i even think keanu has to be ahead of the rock because yes. i would take point break speed yeah. matrix yes. and john yes. wick and say yes. those are for their time top shelf memorable elite genre defining films yes I can't I cannot, put him anywhere close to that level. No, no. Yeah, you made a lot of money. It's like, for example, Floyd Mayweather, one of the best. I don't know if he'd be remembered as as much as Muhammad Ali has been remembered. I don't know if he'd be remembered as much as Pacquiao will be remembered. He's certainly done. He's certainly known for his. Um, um, impenetrable defense, the millions that he's made. But in terms of remembering special fights, is it, it isn't his fault that he's made it look easy. Well, but he, he chose, he chose yeah. the schedule that he had. Yes. He could have fought. Yes. He could have fought different fighters at yes. their apex and he yes. chose to fight them when they weren't. Yeah, exactly. They could have fought Canelo again at a different point in Canelo's career. Didn't want yeah. to do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that that's, it's a good analogy. I mean, like yeah. I said, it's, the, I, I use the, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Knicks fan. So that's why I didn't, I hate denigrating Patrick Ewing, but it's the idea of a good, an all-star level, but not championship level player who's good for a long time, year after year, but you would mm -hmm. always take the transcendent. You'd always take the MJ, right? He, yeah. He, he, they played in the same era and it wasn't yeah. really a comparison. Yeah. And that's what I mean. It's like, you know, The Rock has longevity. He has frequency because he works awfully hard. Yeah. Um, but you just, you need those classics, iconic films and roles. And it's like, that's the other thing. It's like, when you think of Arnold, he's the Terminator forever. Like he is the, ter you say that to anybody in the world, they know exactly what you mean. They know what he sounds like. 
you stay Stallone, Rambo, Rocky, Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones. Like, what is The Rock's character? I'll it's tell you right Hobbs. there. I, I'll tell you right now. The Rock. It's a wrestling persona. That's it. That is it. Because that he is a legend. Yes. That he is yes. at the top of the mountain. Yes. But in movies, nowhere, not even close. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think about that. There's a lot of rock fans out there that love The Rock. I get it. I love The Rock. I'm yeah, a yeah, rock yeah. fan. I, yeah, I, 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 I can't I, have this conversation. No, exactly. Because it, 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 you, he doesn't have anything that you can say competes with Predator. For me, Rocky Three. I love Rocky Three. Rocky movies, Rambo, um, Terminator, True. He doesn't have those things under his belt. He does a lot of movies, yes, like you said, but none of them are classics. None I mean, of them are classics. But I, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you why. And I, you know, I think The Rock is every bit as talented as Arnold was. Yes, he is certainly as physically imposing and athletic, Charismatic. and probably yes. more athletic. Actually, probably more athletic. Arnold was a bodybuilder. The Rock was an athlete. Yes, with a great physique. Yeah, the difference. I'm telling you, it's directors. The Arnold what? directors. Arnold worked for James Cameron. He worked for John McTiernan. These are the greatest action directors of their time. If yes. The Rock wants that mantle, go do a movie with the peak filmmakers of the time. I mean, all due respect, he has great relationships with the Brad Paytons and the Joe McCollette Sarahs of the world. These are not in the conversation. They're not. Mm -hmm. like, like, it's not Chris Nolan. It's not Steven Spielberg. It's not that type of movie. Cameron's still working there. I guess he just does Avatar. But like, yeah. you know, and, and now even like, you know, Marvel's producing, you know, a couple directors. Now we've seen the Russo brothers rise from obscurity and then they deliver you a kind of, well, their family tree delivers you extraction after, mm -hmm. you know, the MCU. And you're like, okay, these guys and 21 Bridges, like not saying those are classics, but even those guys, the scale, the product, like work with people like that and you will get characters Maybe don't maybe they don't get to be the Terminator, but they will definitely be a step up from the San Andreas and the Rampages of the world. The Rock, it, he lives. I've said this before. He lives in the B minus to B plus film. You don't get it. You never. He never gives you an egg. He never yeah. gives you a zero film. Yeah. But he doesn't give you the A plus film, and you cannot lay claim to the crown unless you have multiples of those on your mantle. Yeah. Yeah, I agree 100%. Let us know in the conversation below what you guys think of this topic. Um, and let us know if you want us to have a segment, a random segment of question of the day um, that either you, Brian, can come up with or myself. Um, but that's our show for today. Please hit that like and subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. Uh, share with your friends. It really does help support the channel, especially hitting that like button. It really costs you pretty much nothing to do it. Hit that like button again, please, and subscribe. We come out once a week. We're not bombarding you with every news item that comes out um, every day. Um, we have jobs, we have lives, but we enjoy the genre. We enjoy the business and we love to talk about it as much as you guys do. So remember to hit that like button and we'll see you next time on Nerd Gym Report.